Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. What time is it? It's 9 a.m. James and I were making breakfast when I, uh, well... You can't control your mind reading. No, not yet at least. I hope to learn eventually, though. Is everything all right? Uh, yeah, I'm all right. That's good. I'm assuming you had a night... Yes, I'm sorry for disturbing you both. You didn't disturb us, miss. Besides, we'd rather make sure you're okay before anything. Oh, thank you. Now, why don't you come downstairs with us and have some breakfast? I'm sure some nice food will take your mind off of what you dreamt of. It was embarrassing to be the damsel in distress once again, but I felt rather happy that James and Damon were concerned for me, despite only knowing me for a short time. I wasn't sure if it was just courtesy or if they were genuinely concerned. I couldn't exactly read their mind. Alright. The two boys led me back to the dining room where the smell of bacon and eggs danced in the air. The small laugh from the kitchen and made its way into the room, making my stomach grow in need. Breakfast was good. We should be done with breakfast soon. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. I nodded before sitting down. As I sat down, however, my mind drifted back to the dream I had. The feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder instinctively, even though I knew it wasn't real. However, as my eyes closed, I felt a hand place itself on top of my head, breaking me out of my throat. Huh? Morning. You alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Sam, the owner of the hair on my head, raised an eyebrow at me before rustling my hand and moving away to sit down at the table. He then barked towards the kitchen where James was working. Hey! Is the food done yet? I'm starving! There's no need to yell, Sam! You're yelling too! Don't argue with me! From behind me, Eric appeared and sat beside me, rubbing his thumbs in obvious annoyance. Can we not yell this early in the morning? It's not like we're in the castle. Castle? For some reason, when I heard the word castle, I couldn't help but yell in surprise. This guy's had the castle? <sighs> Some look at me and smear at my reaction. Yeah, we have a castle back home. Our dining room's ten times bigger than this room. And wouldn't it be logical to not yell? <laughs> Whatever. Soon James and Damien appear, hands full of plates of curry bacon, eggs, toast, and waffles. They place the plates down by each safe before sitting themselves. Mmm, my favorite. Finally. Thank you for a breakfast. It looks amazing. It's our pleasure. All of a sudden, my phone began to ring. Usher and me to pour it from my pocket and answer. Hello? Hey! Good morning! Guess who's at your door right now? Round you, there was a knock from the lobby door. My heart stopped. Susan and Naomi were here! I'll get it! My heart quickly began to pound in my chest. Matthew was in the lobby and he would get to the door first. I instantly jumped out of my chair and rushed out of the dining room. As I passed through archway between the dining room and the lobby, I saw Matthew reach his hand for the brasser handle, causing the world to go into slow motion. Matthew, don't! But before my words could reach his ears, Matthew had opened the door and revealed the surprised faces of Naomi and Suzu. Uh, uh... The world around me stopped as Susan and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who merrily stared back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to freezing in a matter of seconds. Uh... <laughs> Hi? I could not believe this was happening. How was I going to explain this? This week was already bad enough. To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. Please, for God's sake, someone do something other than stand there. Who are you? Susu, let me explain. What's going on here? Who's at the door, Matthew? Oh. Soon the other Ingobi appeared in the lobby with us. This situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. Then why did one of them open the door? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, it was no use. There was 
no time to lie to them, I felt helpless. Then I felt how my shoulder felt the tension my body almost faded away. I threw my head to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. I saw James with eyes. Was he going to tell them who they were? Everything seemed so real. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room along with Susu and Naomi and sat across from their confused gazes. As Naomi and Susu sat down, Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising their guests. Whoa, this looks amazing! Thank you! Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meal. Make sure you dig in! I look at Naomi and Susa as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they place in their mouth. Hopefully, the food would ease their minds for whatever James wanted to reveal. As Naomi and Susa ate their impromptu meals, James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow more red in the face. So, Anderson, are you gonna tell us what's going on? Well, you see, um... Gently, James placed a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me to just eat my food. As I began to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Susu. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense. It's such a huge house. A huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Well, Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work. So she lets us wear casual clothes. Yeah, something like that. We're sorry if we made this situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. There's an arcade? <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon, they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? Sam, not now. Well, I, uh, I wanted to help out, but at the same time, I wanted to go out with my friend. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. Are you sure? I'm sure. Besides, it is my housewarming party. I should help out too. Want us to help out as well? I think we've got it all taken care of. Thanks, though, girls. All right. We'll head on out then, so we're not in the way. Sorry guys, I'll hang out with you guys soon. It's all good, Anderson. We'll definitely come to the housewarming party tonight. Thank you. I let them back into the lobby and walked them to the doors, opening for them with a thankful smile. They both gave me hugs before walking out in Naomi's car, which was parked in the driveway. And with that, they left. I was happy that they wanted to help, but I had to do this on my own. It was not their work, so I didn't want to force it on them just because they were my best friends. We had the entire day to work. The party was tonight and we had to do all we could to make everything right. We sat down and talked about what needed to happen before the party started that night. Each guy had been assigned a different part of the party to do and right after lunch we began to work. Since everything was taken care of by at least one in Cubus, James told me I could ask this one of them. The question was, who? I stay in the dining room, knowing that the table had to become a buffet table. 
As I look around the room carefully, I know that floor needed waxing and the table surfaces need a major dusting. Eric came up next to me, lowered a small mobbing bucket he had brought in under the floor and rolled his lips up higher on his thumb before looking at me with a rise eyebrow. Are you sure you want to work with me with cleaning this place up? It'll be a lot of cleaning and tidying. Plus, we have to move the chairs to the corner. I shook my hair, rolling up my slips and walking the table, grabbing a hold of a chair. I think I can handle lifting a couple of chairs and moving them. Eric smiled at me with a soft chuckle before following my lead. Eventually, we had moved all the chairs to the corner of the room and had begun cleaning the room and the table. Silence consumed the air as we both focused on cleaning. I decided to start mopping the floor, but as I stepped towards the bucket, my foot rolled over a small fluffy object causing me slip. Ah! Before I hit the floor, however, I went up in the arms of Eric, stared up at him in a dance like tip while creeping under his shirt. His face had pure concerts as he held on and looked down at me. Are you alright, princess? All I could do was nod as I stared at Eric, who was generally concerned. There was no flirtation or smirk on his face. It was cute to see a new side of him. <sighs> Eric let out a small sigh in relief. That's a relief. You didn't twist your ankle, did you? N no, I'm fine. Gently, I felt Eric's arm deep under my knees so he could lift me up bridal style. I crept tighter under his shirt before he saw me on the table and knelt down to look at my feet. I I'm really fine. Eric didn't speak as he gently looked over my ankles lightly massaging them to test for pain. I didn't feel any pain. I felt pleasure. I bit my lip as Eric gently massaged his fingers over my skin. I would have had full massage before, but Eric had amazing skill. Each touch and press sent a wave of flesh running up my spine. I had to fight to hold back and moan. Eric's face, though, didn't shift the end of mischief or seduction. It remained as concert as ever was full of surprises. Eventually, he finished looking over my feet and smiled in relief. Slowly stood up and smiled his usual smile at me with a small giggle. You were right, princess. You were fine. Eric suddenly lifted me off the table and lowered me to the floor before placing a sweet kiss on my forehead and continuing his work. I stood there for a moment before slowly walking the back and cleaning as well. My heart continued to pound as we both finished cleaning that room.